Okay, so today what we're gonna have a look at is the case for either a bull market and a bear market and have a look at both sides of the scenarios and, and, and what might possibly happen um, so that we're ready for both um, and then basically try to come to a conclusion of where we are at the moment um, in this stage of the cycle. If you like the video, please go ahead and give it a like down below, subscribe, let's get straight into it. So. Essentially, we, 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 want, we don't want to be like really, really rigid when it comes to our outlook on the market and we're just so determined uh, that things are either going to go up, which is usually the way that people kind of think. Um, we want to be open to all scenarios and all possibilities and have a plan in place so that we don't have to endure every part of the downturn um, should we get that. Okay, so we basically got going to have a look at both cases for the bear market if we are in one, um, and the bull market, um, if we are still in that and remaining intact. So let's have a look at some of the cases for the bear market, okay? Because we have to be, you know, honest with ourselves that you know that uh, it, it is always going to be a possibility that essentially we have, um, you know, basically seen the highs for this cycle, and from now we move down, okay? So the most obvious one is in recent weeks, we've just been in a downtrend, right? We've basically been downtrending for about five weeks straight, um, have seen no bounce, no real major support. Um, we've got this big dump over here on December the uh, 4th, um, and we've seen somewhat of a bounce from there. Um, but essentially, that's, that, that's, that, that's one thing. Is we, we have still, we're still basically downtrending um in this uh in, in 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 the last four weeks now what most people will point out to is this double top area over here okay and we maybe saw some sort of um distribution phase over here um like a smaller version of what we got back in may where we basically um hit this 65 to 69k region area and again we've just broke down and that's a sign of weakness in the market which is definitely um a possibility right you know we haven't really seen any momentum up here you can argue that excuse me that the buying power is really weak and we've just seen like a massive rejection off there um and it's a double top formation where we basically hit the same price point um, taking out some liquidity and now moving lower. Okay, that's that. That is one thing. So that's that's uh, that, that's one point for, for for the bears that we're in this downtrend. We've got this double top formation, um, and then also if we look, okay, at past cycles. Um, let's go go into the bit for next shot here. And um, what we can see is that every time if we are a proponent of the four year cycle, and that is something that, that plays out, is that we've seen in this sort of late November, December stage, we've seen every four years, okay, some form of top being put in for the long term, okay? Now, that would mean that we have topped here at 69, and that was the top, okay? And then from here, we move lower, um, and basically, if we do endure some sort of similar bear market where we draw down 75 to 80, 85%, that will put us in somewhere between like that sort of 11 to 14, 15K region, okay? So that's really the main cases that I can see here for um, from, from the bear market. I'm not gonna go into loop to, to, to move it to losing some of the uh, major, uh, any major moving averages. Because as you'll see when we get onto the next, onto the bull case, is that uh, actually we have not. So the first thing to look at is let's zoom out. Okay, what do you see? I see a continued uptrend. Okay, even if we take out the macro macro cycle from you know 2012 13, and we just look at recently. Okay, since this move, since our, since our lows, does this look to you? Like we're in a bear market. I mean, look at it. Does that does that does that actually look to you like we are downtrending and we're basically imminently about to hit these lows, or does this look like a correction in a major uptrend? It looks like we're still in an uptrend, right? 
And if we take out this impulsive, uh, or, or we, we look at this impulsive move from here, and as we've alluded to in the previous video, okay, and and uh, and the last few videos, is that so long as this remains intact, we've had this uh, low here, and we're making higher highs and higher lows, okay, the bias has got to be here, okay. Now, obviously, should we, as we speculated before, should we lose this area of 41, 40k, then I think that that does open the possibility for a 30k, um, for a 30k BTC, okay, um, and maybe even lower potentially, but that's going to be like serious, serious floor support, but I wouldn't be banking on that, okay. So, another thing that we can look at, okay, is, is this correction or is this downtrend in price quite normal, okay? Have we seen periods of 40% um, corrections before? Absolutely. We've seen this over here, okay, which was a 40% correction from top to bottom, pretty much. This was, I believe, a 56, yeah, about 55, 56% correction. Um, and if we look in previous bull markets, we can see that the it was basically routine and commonplace to get these sort of deeper uh, corrections on the way up, okay? It's pretty uh, pretty standard if we look at it from top to bottom that we get these big corrections, so nothing out of the ordinary there. And we speculated as well that we are expecting lengthening cycles, okay? Um, so, we are expecting to move into 2022 and still make new highs because as an asset class, we are essentially looking at, you know, more money, more investors coming in, okay? And with that higher market capitalization on prices, we're looking for that to basically stretch out and you get that sort of diminished returns of either price and time effect, okay? Where cycles tend to get longer, you tend to get less, um, squeeze less money out of the market in those, in those high caps like BTC, um, and that's basically the general trend of how the market is going to look. Okay, um, so that's that. And, and if we look at this as a price action as far as BTC goes, not that it necessarily has to happen, but we are expecting some form of blow off top. Okay, and what we've seen is more of these rounded distribution tops, which basically signals some sort of reaccumulation rather than some sort of major topping pattern. Okay, um, so that's the way that we can look at the way that this pattern has played out. So maybe if we just speculate, we don't know exactly about the time, but maybe, maybe we move something like this, start to form some sort of ascending wedge potentially, or we get this we get this big top and we, we finish off here at around the 150 to 200 mark, which is what we're speculating at. Um, and then from here, uh, we can get basically get this downturn in prices and move um, in, in, in into the next down phase, but that's, that's pretty much there. And if we look at um, what we would expect from some of the higher, uh, from, some, some, from some of the altcoins during a bear phase, what would we expect? We would expect, okay, as BTC is forming its top that, uh, and, and, and moving down, that some of the altcoins like uh, Ethereum, um, you know, all, all of the majors are going to be basically be bleeding really, really hard, and the volatility in those is going to be really hard to the downside. But we haven't seen that. What we're seeing is we're seeing Ethereum actually break out to new highs and looking like this is forming some sort of pattern um, of reaccumulation consolidation to move higher and attack that 0.1 Satoshi uh, region. And if we were in a bear market, we would expect to be moving uh, down. In value, okay, but we're not. We're seeing strength in some of the altcoins, and if we look at some of the altcoins like Matic um, and Luna, uh, some of the other layer ones, right? What we're looking at is uh, strength in those projects, and even a lot of the um, what you'd expect in, in terms of the shit coins and stuff like that, like uh, um, you know, w w like e e even things like XRP, which people don't really. Um, like, I mean, I think that uh, XRP actually still has, might still have its move to go, but, you know, a lot of coins that maybe haven't done so much, you'd expect them to maybe essentially just be dead or dying off now, and, you know, minus 70% or whatever, the ones that haven't really made the big moves and essentially the ones that people don't like, but that hasn't happened, okay? So, um, you know, the, the market as a whole is giving us a clue that we're not quite done yet, okay? If we also look at previous... Um, 
previous downtrends and where they have taken us to, okay? Like we said, if we move 80% down from here, that would knock out not only just this uh, 30K region, which would be plausible as an idea, but we would actually have to come down, take out 20, and we have never done that before. Bitcoin has never come down, retraced down, and taken out um, its previous high, which would be uh, which would be support, and actually penetrated that. So if we look at that, and we see here that when we had this downtrend, these downtrends, okay, um, over here, okay, um, if we assume this is the start of one cycle, okay, we moved up to um, 11, 1200, moved down, never came close to it. Over here, moved up, and then we moved down, but we never actually touched this uh, th th this high over here. And if, we, if we're assuming this again, this is the start of one cycle, and if we move down, that would be something different that has never happened before. So definitely something to watch out for um, that for me remains an unlikely scenario and more of hopium more than anything, okay? Um, and that's what we're doing there. And, and, and if we look at some of the key moving averages, okay, in terms of um, the, the fibs, okay, on the weekly, what we haven't done yet to tell us that we're in a bear market is when we get this crossover, okay, over here, that signals to us downtrend and then we get this reaccumulation phase. So once we get all of the FIB EMAs below the 55 crossing over, that gives us a macro indication that we're moving into a, some sort of downtrend um, and that we should basically expect some form of lower prices from there, okay? And again, we got this over here. We broke the 55, we moved into this downtrend reaccumulation phase, and that was all she wrote for the rest of the cycle, okay? Um, so that's another thing to look out for, and we haven't yet done that. We've actually been holding the 55 as support, okay, on the weekly, which is a good, strong sign for BTC. And we can see that we did that um, in previous cycles, we got somewhere close to these regions over here, and uh, we can, you know, we continued moving up. But I, I think this is uh, more of the likely scenario. And until we actually break this, and like I said, I imagine if we did break below that 40, that would cause us a lot of concern. And if we move down here um, into this region over here, then that would probably coincide in a week or two of this, with this, with this crossover of the lower, um, the, the the lower. Uh, FIB EMAs on the weekly crossing over on the 55, which would give us an indication that more downtrend is 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 is, is coming up, and that's pretty much just done for the for the cycle. Okay, but that hasn't ha yet happened, so we need to look at basically market structure. We're holding so far, we're good. We're within those realms of what is considered a big correction, and we're fine. Okay, so that's basically how we're looking at that. Some other key uh, just uh, moving averages in general. If we look at the EMA, um, I believe this is the, yeah, so we, if, we, if we look at that 55, we've been holding this as support, looking good, um, and that's pretty much where we are at the moment, like, 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 like we said before. Um, and I guess a last thing to have a look at in terms of the dominance of BTC, okay, is we're kind of forming this tr little triple bottom over here on the BTC dominance chart. And if we were in some kind of, uh, like at this moment in time, in some kind of, uh, you know, big, big downtrend, um, we would expect again that uh, the BTC dominance would be moving up because volatility um, to the upside would be pretty, pretty harsh, okay? Um, and more of money would be flying out of alts and in more riskier plays into the lower risk assets like BTC and stuff like that. But we're not, we're seeing us hang around at these low levels and what we're speculating, what I'm speculating that I think is gonna happen in the next move, okay, is essentially BTC is gonna be the one that leads us out of the next, um, out of this correction, okay, um, and I would I would expect us to possibly move somewhere like this where we move 
um, up in dominance because either, let's say we do move to the downside, then we've got this to, to show us that, hey, look, if we move up, okay, and we do start shit in the bed and everything starts going to shit, then, we, then we've got BTC to hold us at that level of, um, of, 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 of dominance where it, it's going to be a good thing to hold if we go lower. Okay, and then if we go higher, I would expect in this market cycle, okay, given that there are more projects, more market cap um, money moving into the smaller projects in the altcoin space and whatnot, is I would expect us at some point to break this low over here that we got in January, February in 18, which was three, four years ago. So much more money is in crypto at the minute. So what I would expect would be something like this, where we move up maybe to this region over here. I'm not sure exactly where, but BTC to lead us out. And then I would expect the market blow off top to look something like this, okay? And you can screenshot this, um, and this will give you that indication that we will be at the top, okay? Because this doesn't make sense to me. The BTC dominance will just stop here and that's it, okay? I think we do have quite a ways to go. And I, I would be expecting something like this to happen where we get this absolute euphoric top where we break these lows because think of this like this euphoria over here in 2017 if you were 18 if you weren't in it was massive it was like you literally could think only was up even i back then was thinking do you know what i'll just buy any coin i'm willing to hold a year or two or whatever and i'll just wait for my money to come back come into me um and in the end get, got my ass handed uh, to me by uh, having a, a prolonged period of downturn. But that's the sort of euphoric feeling that you want to feel, okay? And we're not there yet, okay? Like I said, there's so many other indicators that we can see and we're not quite at that level of euphoria and we've got a ways to go. And with everything kind of converging with the length and in cycles, we're not quite at some indicators yet. Um, and indicators like this, which would completely make sense to me, where whereby we get this, um, you know, th this this lower low on the dominance from four years ago would make total sense to me. So that's how I'd be looking at the market. So in my opinion, we can see that there are actually, when you zoom out, not that many cases for the bear market and the bear trend being in place, okay? We can find maybe, for me anyway, two, three, four reasons, okay? that are strong enough for me to go, oh, hey, look, that's something that I want to be taking note of, okay? Which are basically the four-year cycles um, and uh, that we have, you know, essentially double-topped. Those are really the only two reasons that I can find on a macro trend that, that show me that we're, that, that we're moving lower. Sure, we're in a downtrend at the minute, but this is nothing out of the ordinary. Until something actually breaks and tells me otherwise, fine, okay? Um, and you shouldn't really be selling your crypto at the minute anyway because... Um, we've already made, you know, that, that downtrend um, for the moment of, of like 40%. And if you sell now, you're essentially selling into weakness and you don't want to do that, okay? And even if we got a bear market, because no one knows, okay, if we're in a downtrend, uptrend, and um, no one knows 100%. All you can do is use the information in front of you and, get, and use that to give you the highest probability of where we're going to head. If we drop 40% from here and we drop another, say, 75%, okay, from the tops, from the absolute tops to the absolute bottoms, okay, you do end up having to hold through um, a big decline. But by the time that you've actually confirmed that you're in some sort of downtrend and you're here, and let's so say you get these fear EMAs and we get this, this breakdown here, you'd be in 30, 35 um, support, you know, region. Um, by that but at that point, you really, really are just selling into support with no guarantees that it's going to go lower. And I've been called out with this before, and I've seen other people message me about this, where they've tried to bar, uh, to, to, to sell rather, um, and try to get smart with the market and go, hey, look, I'm going to buy a little bit lower. I'll buy when it gets lower, and I can basically have more BTC buying power. And then it never let, never ends up coming to fruition, and then we end up basically just skyrocketing high, and the market leaves them behind. Okay, so I would be adding over here. And if you're confident in BTC, which you should be if you're in crypto, because it's a highly volatile market, okay, if you're, if you're confident in BTC and how it's going to operate, um, then um, you should be fine holding crypto and just accept volatility. You know how the game works, okay? 
So yeah, and then if we look at that, those bull cases, like I said, we're still holding a lot of moving averages. We're still in an overall macro uptrend. We've looked at the dominance, okay, how we expect it to ultimately really move lower. It can move higher and then lower, but really we're expecting the BTC dominance to be lower to give us that, that, that idea that, hey, look, we've got even more euphoria in the market, okay? Um, and that's essentially how we're looking at that. And then our theory of basically um, lengthening cycles and those diminishing returns is what I would expect, okay? So like I said, we're seeing strength in those altcoins. The dominance isn't quite even at those lows. That gives us that indication. And then essentially we're holding those key moving averages at the minute is the 55 weekly and haven't made any big crossovers on the big fib weeklies. So for the moment, we are good. So hopefully that gives you some more information for you to make your own judgments about, about where we are at. Um, I could obviously go into a lot of other indicators, but I'm trying to give you the macro outlook um, and why you should not be fearful on these big drops. Uh, hopefully that was helpful. Let me know if you like the video down below. Let me know where you think the market is headed. Um, and until the next one, I will catch you soon. Peace out.